If you or someone you know watches Dr. Phil, you might want to tell them to consider this video the next time they pick up grandma's dish remote, open the TV guide, and take themselves out on a nice little greasy slice of mid-afternoon Philly boy. Thanks to all of those who have subscribed and got me to my first subscriber goal of 100 subscribers in just one month. Okay, maybe a little more. I'm trying to get to 1,000 before the end of 2023. So, without further ado, welcome to my fourth video, and welcome to False Prophet, The Phil Psychosis. There's a stigma attached to mental illness, and that really bothers me. There should not be. I mean, having depression or anxiety or whatever should have no more stigma than having a knee injury or a kidney infection or yeah. diabetes. But there is yeah. a stigma attached to it. And I've tried to talk about this in a way where it's okay to talk about it and not be ashamed of it. It's, it's okay. If you've got anxiety, you've got PTSD, wh whatever, it's okay. Let's talk about it. Let's get help for it. Get it behind you and move on. I mean, it's not, it's not something that you should be ashamed of. Philip McGraw, known to daytime television as Dr. Phil, has been exposed for his manipulative and destructive methods. Additionally, shocking new allegations against executive producer Carla Pennington have surfaced. According to Forbes, McGraw was paid nearly $80 million in 2017, making him the highest paid TV host for that year. However, McGraw's road to success has been paved with the exploitation and manipulation of those who come to him for help. At a glance, the show appears to be yet another dose of scripted, over-the-top reality TV drama, but a deeper dive reveals something sinister and destructive at the heart of the show. And if people knew, they might not watch anymore. I can remember coming home from school, and every now and then, Dr. Phil was on the TV. Depending on the topic, I'd either roll my eyes and walk into my room, or sit and watch the rest of the episode. There's something about this show that must be designed to get even those who would have otherwise never watched this kind of content absolutely interested. Born September 1st, 1950, in the small Oklahoma town of Anita, McGraw was raised alongside two older sisters. Speaking to his work ethic, at the age of 13, he worked at a restaurant called Pizza Planet and at an A&W root beer stand, whatever that is. Later moving to Kansas, he attended high school while his father pursued a dream of becoming a psychologist. McGraw then went to University of Tulsa on a football scholarship, later transferring to Midwestern State University, where he earned his bachelor's degree in psychology. He then earned a master's in experimental psychology, a PhD in clinical psychology at the University of Northern Texas, and received training in forensic psychology at the Wilmington Institute. McGraw co-founded Courtroom Sciences, Inc., in 1990 with a lawyer named Gary Dobbs, also known as CSI. Courtroom Sciences, Inc. is still a trial consulting firm that aids in jury selection and witness training, among other things. This is the platform that allowed McGraw to be contacted by Oprah, eventually leading to his massive success on TV. There was even a 2017 TV show produced by CBS, ironically titled Bull, based on this time in McGraw's life. Once CSI gained some renown, Oprah hired the firm to help her prepare for a 1998 lawsuit known as the Armarillo Beef Trial. Oprah won the case and attributed her win mostly to McGraw. This prompted an invite for him to appear weekly on her show. With the help of Oprah, McGraw started his own production company, Pitsky Productions, if I'm pronouncing that right, which allowed him to start his own show, which first aired September 16, 2002. Since then, the show has seen around 3,500 episodes. However, many people have been negatively impacted, and some have even been permanently traumatized from their time on the show. The things guests are referring to haven't necessarily been showcased on camera, but rather have been happening backstage and even post-episode. Many guests have documented negative experiences experiences during their time on the show. When viewed together, one can make the assumption that the Dr. Phil show may be mostly out to make money, not help their guests. The first case we will go over is that of Todd Herzog, who claimed a victory on China's version of the show Survivor. Herzog claims the Dr. Phil production crew preyed on his substance dependency. As he began his prep time backstage, he was led to a dressing room alone. As the door was shut behind him, he noticed two perfectly placed bottles of Smirnoff vodka on the table. Unable to control himself and possibly suffering from withdrawal symptoms, he drank one entire bottle 
In addition to this horror, just prior to being carried on stage, he was given a Xanax pill and told it would calm him. As he was carried on stage, he was confused and humiliated. Another disturbing story is that of Danielle Bergoli, also known as Bad Baby. Arriving on the show with her mother, Bergoli became a troubled teen turned music star due to her memorable quotes and actions from her episode on Dr. Phil. Most notable is her catchphrase turned meme, catch me outside, how about that? Arguably the most famous famous and successful Dr. Phil guest of all time. It is shocking to find out that Bergoli's initial story is Bergoli was referred to Turnabout Ranch, a Christian-based residential treatment center located on a running cattle ranch in Utah. She explained that children beginning the program were not allowed to sleep or shower for days. Under threat of being restrained or punished by staff, they were forced to perform strenuous chores. She describes an environment where kids are punished for speaking out and there are no cameras or phones. The only positive situation she described involved a 61-year-old staff member who was actually brutally murdered by a youth during her visit. An interesting point is that Bergoli actually returned to the Dr. Phil show for a follow-up interview after her visit to the ranch. In this episode, she stated that her time at the center was fine and even said she was glad she went. Are you glad you went? Yeah. She did, however, slam Dr. Phil by saying, you were nothing before I came on this show. Hannah Archuleta, who was 17 during her time on the show, took legal action against Turnabout Ranch in 2019. Archuleta says that within her first two weeks attending the facility, that she was sexually abused by a staff member. Upon reporting the abuse to the other staff at the ranch, Archuleta was subjected to additional physical and emotional abuse in an effort to silence her. This included taking away her ability to use the restroom, increased manual labor, and sleeping solely on a wooden plank. McGraw has also had questionable relationships with guests as well. A 19-year-old guest named Sarah Morrison claims McGraw intentionally kept her dependent on him, in addition to sexual misconduct that she endured. The Texas State Board of Examiners found that McGraw had held an inappropriate dual relationship with Morrison, playing both the roles of employer and therapist. Many current and past employees of the show recount inappropriate and traumatic things that happened to them during their time working on the show. Negative experiences ranging from racist behavior to being unproperly equipped to handle guests with extreme mental health issues. One employee remembers being explicitly told, make sure she doesn't get her meds, referring to a female guest that producers wanted to appear unstable. In addition, 10 former employees have said there is clear treatment discrepancy made between senior and lower level employees. In other words, the less senior you are, the harsher the work environment gets for you. In fact, they insist that Carla Pennington, executive producer for the show, is the perpetuator that creates many problems for the workplace. Staff say she's threatened to take away their jobs and makes degrading comments towards them over the smallest of incidences. The Dr. Phil show claims that this can simply not be true due to her occupying a highly honorable and coveted position at CBS for over 35 years. However, one employee who has since quit has revealed that they even sought therapy due to working in a hostile work environment. Although none of these complaints were directed at Dr. Phil specifically, employees are certain that he is aware of the situation. It's important to note that neither the show or Dr. Phil himself have ever officially apologized or even acknowledged responsibility for the trauma caused by these experiences, those on the show or at the facilities the show has referred guests to. In fact, they openly deny responsibility for every single wrongful act mentioned in this article. In Bad Baby's case, she publicly directed a message to Dr. Phil demanding that he apologize for what happened to her and Archuleta, to which Dr. Phil denied any responsibility for what happened to them. You'd think he would at least admit that he should look further into the facilities before sending kids there. Additionally, these incidents are not isolated. There are many other guests with similar stories, even higher profile cases such as Shelley Duvall, the lead actress in The Shining. Dr. Phil, you may have thought, would be kicking back relaxing with the money he's gained from exploiting people and their emotional and physical issues. But 
he must be a poor manager of money or he owes a lot of people for his success. These days, he's often using his platform to promote mobile games that he and his production crew refer to as app games. You can actually build a farm and harvest it. As you progress in the game, you win different awards and credits. Other than that, he appears to continue using the same format that's hurt so many of his guests over the years. If you like this video, please hit subscribe. And I just want to say thank you everyone that got me to 100 subscribers. Well, 103. I just have to say that it's amazing and I never could have expected that from just three videos. It makes me so excited to be able to make content. It's hard to, it's hard to put it into words. So I'm just going to put it into song.